I put in all this work and I only lost two pounds. Ugh, this is not work for me. I'm giving up. All right, let's get into it. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. As you can tell by the title, today we are talking about my weight loss journey. How I went from 188 pounds to 168 pounds, which I'm currently sitting at at the moment. I was diagnosed with PCOS in November of 2022. And then that's when I kind of started to flip everything. Started to flip my diet, started to flip my training. Everyone's journey is very different, but hopefully you can take something away from this video. Without further ado, let's jump into this video. Okay, so I have shared a video like this in the past, kind of going over like my top tips. Now you can see everything that was actually put into motion. Hold on, I got my, my notes here. One piece that majority of people hate, including myself, the one piece that I would say is the most difficult in figuring out what works for you, nutrition. I feel like I'm finally in a place where I feel comfortable with what I'm eating. I feel comfortable with how much I'm eating. We're gonna break it down into just a few different categories. One, let's talk about calories and what it is that I specifically did when it came to my calories. On one side, you have people who do intuitive style of eating. They just eat and base everything off of how they feel or how big the portions look. And then you have the other side of people who actually count calories and count macronutrients, carbs, fats and protein. I am somewhere in between. So I do count calories for the most part. This is just what works for me. I need to know exactly what it is that I'm eating. I have a very large appetite so I can eat. So if I'm not mindful of how much it is that I'm consuming, it's very easy for me to overeat. How I figure out how much calories I should be consuming, TDEE website, which I'll link down below. It might not be 100% like exactly this is exactly what you need but it's a good starting point you enter in your height you enter in your weight activity level all of that and it'll give you a certain amount of calories and this is your calories to maintain current physique if you scroll on down to the bottom you will see cutting and bulking that's where you will click on if for someone who wants to put on size you will go to the bulking side and if someone who wants to cut lose some body fat you'll go to the cutting side so that's what i do that's how i figure out my calories how i gauge that now secondly was figuring out what type of diet i would say was best for me being diagnosed with PCOS and being insulin resistant, I was not able to follow the same type of diet I always have in the past, which was high protein, high carb, lower fat. That is what I always did. I had to switch that up just because my body just wasn't responding the same way to that, the way I was feeling, everything. It just, it just my body just didn't like it. I'm on lower to moderate carbs, higher fat, high protein. Sticking with the nutrition topic, and this was probably like the most important thing for me was getting rid of that scarcity mindset. The idea of if we had pizza, this is gonna be my last time eating pizza so I need to eat as much as possible because I'm not gonna have it back. You know, if I buy a bag of chips, if I buy ice cream, I don't have to finish it all. And that's always been my issue when it came to binge eating. Okay, I'm gonna eat this today, but then I'm not gonna have it again. I'm trying to eat as clean as possible. And so I would just restrict myself like crazy and then overeat. That had to go, <laughs> that had to go. You can eat anything, literally anything and still lose weight. I, I really had to get that out of my mind like, oh, I can't have these foods, I can't have these, I'm trying to be as healthy as possible and clean as possible. Like, no, I like those things and it's okay to have those things. I like alcohol, so I'm gonna continue to drink alcohol. Now, I wouldn't have nearly as much now as I would in the past. So you do have to be somewhat disciplined on how often you have those things, but you don't have to remove them. And because of that, I was able to eat a healthy portion. My biggest takeaways was I needed to count calories. I needed to, it's what helped me stay on track. I had to get rid of that scarcity mindset. It's okay to have the foods that I enjoy and there is no good or bad food. Some foods are more nutrient dense than others, but other than that, get that out of your mind, okay? Let's move over to tip number two. 
All right, next up, let's talk about training, hitting the gym, working out. So I had to do a whole 180 when it came to the way I was working out because I've always loved training like an athlete. I'm a former athlete and that's the way I've always trained, a lot of high intensity, I wanna sweat, I wanna be out of breath, like a lot of jumping, a lot of moving on top of lifting heavy. My hormones was like, girl, no. <laughs> Nah, you're not about to be doing all of this, <laughs> which sucks because I loved it. I loved it. Obviously, I'm still getting things under control, getting my hormones balanced. Does that mean I'll never be able to do high intensity ever again? No, but I needed to take a break from it. And so that's what I did. I took a break from all of the super, super high intensity type of workouts that I was doing. Going to the gym six, seven days a week. I still continue to lift heavy weights, but I don't go as often. I needed to rest more, but I didn't really want to like rest, rest. I picked up another form of training that I felt like I would enjoy, which I do very much, which is Pilates. If you guys have seen my videos or my full week of workouts, did you see that I am going to the gym to lift weights three times a week, and then I'm going to Pilates two times a week. It has been absolutely amazing. I feel like this is a program that I enjoy that is easy for me to follow. I feel like my body is getting enough rest, but I'm still able to challenge and push myself. I think a lot of people have been associating my transformation specifically to Pilates. And although Pilates is absolutely amazing and you can transform your body, the muscle and stuff that was already there, the muscle was there from weight training for years. What Pilates allowed me to do is just stay consistent. Like the biggest thing is consistency, obviously, but I don't wanna discourage you from going. Go to Pilates if you feel like it's something you would enjoy and something that you feel like you can stay consistent in. It doesn't necessarily have to be Pilates. If you want to go to some cycling classes, some dance classes, if you wanna to go to yoga, find weekly schedule that you feel like is easy for you to follow because it, it was just all about consistency. So I would say training is kind of one of the easy parts. It's, it's just really about moving your body. So look for that. Figure out what it is that, it, that works for you. If you don't like the gym, don't go to the gym. <laughs> if you don't like it, don't go. The next one, let's talk about rest and recovery. I was terrible when it came to recovering and taking care of my body. Terrible. I have been moving nonstop since I was a kid. I started playing sports when I was about nine and I never let up. Elementary school, middle school, high school, college, it just never stopped. So I was always used to being extremely busy every single day. Post college, I was like, okay, I have all this free time. What is it I'm gonna do next? And so I was going to the gym seven days a week. Working out is stress, stress on your body. And although a little bit of stress is good for you, too much is not. When you're trying to lose weight and you feel like nothing's changing, then you start going to the gym more. So I'm like, now I need to work out more. Taking a break and pulling myself back was probably one of the hardest things because I'm like, I feel like I'm not doing enough. Like, how is my body supposed to change? How am I supposed to lose weight if I'm not working out? Like, now mm, I am perfectly fine going to the gym and working out four days a week. Like, my body is just not like, crazy exhausted. I still suffer from fatigue for PCOS, so I still have those days. But on those days, I rest, especially when it comes down to like trying to get your hormones and stuff in check and balance. You got to rest, especially if you're lifting weights. Those muscles grow on the days that you're resting. The two other like really important factors within the resting recovery, one, finding a new hobby that didn't put a lot of stress and just kind of allowed me to really relax. Otherwise, I'm a TV person. I'm a social media person. Just I feel like just in front of screens and stuff all the time. I picked up reading. Reading has been just amazing for me. I told myself I wanted to read like one to two books a month. So on the year, hopefully 12 to 24 books on the year. And baby, I read like 30 books in a matter of two months. <laughs> it's been like, it's been since November now and I'm probably like 50 books deep the best thing that I can turn to. Reading might not be for everybody and that's totally fine. So find a good hobby that just doesn't involve social media and doesn't involve sitting in front of the TV all day. Even though I do watch TV, I like Netflix, I like my shows. That just kind of aids in like my just non-stress activities. And lastly, sleep. 
Let's talk about sleep. You can rest, yeah, you can take the day off, but do you have good sleeping habits? Are you actually getting rest when you are sleeping? I know everyone's schedule is different. Some people have children, um, different types of jobs. So I know like the amount of sleep that everyone is gonna get will not be the same, but I wanted to make sure that I was getting quality sleep, which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Bear Mattress. For anyone that is new to my channel or that missed my previous video, videos regarding Bear Mattress, they produce premium mattresses intended to improve the overall quality of your sleep. Everyone has different preferences when it comes to sleep position as well as mattress firmness. So on their website, you can take a quiz to help find the best mattress for your needs. They make everything simple, delivering your mattress right to your front door. It's extremely easy to pop open and set up. I received my mattress November 1st, so as of today, it has been five months, and let's just say I have gotten a lot of use out of it, especially considering we did not have a couch for the first three months that I had the mattress. I have the Medium Elite Hybrid Mattress, which gives me that plush cloud feeling, but also still supports my back, as I am someone who has always had some mild back problems. It's also perfect for me and my boyfriend considering we both run very hot in our sleep. And that now as I'm currently talking about rest and recovery, we all know that sleep is detrimental to your health and it should be a priority and not just for your fitness journey. It's not just sleeping, it's getting quality sleep and waking up feeling rejuvenated. And with Bare Mattress, my sleep has been amazing. Almost too good because I never wanna get out of my cozy bed in the morning. Now, another great thing about Bear Mattress is the sleep trial that they offer. So if you are considering them, but you aren't 100% sure, you do have 120 nights to test out the mattress to ensure that you love it. Plus there's a lifetime warranty included. Of course, you know, I got a discount code, which I will put on the screen and I will list all the information down below in the description box. Good mattress, good sheets, a good, comforter, duvet, you know, just making your space just really, really cozy and comfortable. And as you guys know, I got a cozy room. Quality of sleep has been very, very important. It is very important. I'll call those the big three, nutrition, training, rest and recovery. Now I'm gonna just go over a few smaller tips that I feel like is very important and things to keep in mind throughout your fitness journey. Setting realistic goals. You have to set realistic goals for yourself. You can't think like, oh, I wanna lose 40 pounds in four months. Like, be for real, <laughs> be for real. You've been putting on weight for years, years. It is not just gonna fall off in a month, in two months, in three months. Don't be trying to lose a crazy amount of weight overnight because it's not gonna happen. And even if it does, guarantee you gonna put it back on. Just set smaller goals. And just for example, these are goals that I set for myself. I wanna walk 30,000 steps for this week, for the whole week. Maybe I want to get 5,000 steps in a day. I want to make sure I go to the gym at least three times this week. In the whole month, I want to make sure that I get 20 workout sessions in. It's not like, oh, I want to lose 15 pounds in a month. Get away from those weight loss goals. When you have those type of goals, as far as like a number on the scale, if you don't hit them, you're just gonna feel super discouraged, especially if you feel like you're working super hard, if you're staying consistent and you don't hit that number, it's just gonna, it, it will literally mess you up mentally. And maybe stick into like maybe some nutrition goals. I want to cut back on the amount of soda I'm drinking. Maybe I wanna have alcohol only a couple times this month. Those things still feel just as good when you reach them. Just be realistic on what type of goals you're setting for yourself and don't set yourself up for failure. Next tip that I feel like goes hand in hand with the setting realistic goals is patience. We don't have it. We don't have it. Most of us don't have it. Especially with having social media in front of our face and we see people every day having amazing body transformations, amazing weight loss transformations, weight gaining transformation. The thing is you see all of this within like a 30 second video clip. You're not seeing all of the hard work, the years, the months, the consistency that this person put in behind the camera. You only see what people put out. You only see what I put out. You don't see that I'm showing up, I'm staying super consistent. Oh, I'm falling off, I'm having rough days. Guarantee everybody is struggling just as much as you are. We are all struggling. Oh, the first, within the first three months, I only lost like five, six pounds. Three months. I just continued to do what I was doing. I stuck to the program and then it felt like, oh, almost overnight. Finally on that fourth and fifth month, my body's like, yep, all right, all right, we'll get rid of this, we'll shed it. If I would've quit after the first two, three months of only dropping a few pounds, 
then I would have never gotten to the point that I'm at now. So that was something I kept in mind for myself is be patient, be patient with yourself. You went through this for years. You went to this for, for three years of not really being able to lose any weight at all. It's gonna take you some time to get it off. And even though some days I'm just like, this sucks and I just, you know, feel super discouraged. I still showed up and you know, starting to pay off. It's paying off a little bit. Next tip, let's talk about tracking your progress. I track my progress specifically for social media and for you guys because I'm sharing this journey with you and I'm kind of taking you along with me. Video, I'm taking photos and specifically for social media, I'm weighing myself. If I was not doing the social media, I would not be weighing myself. As we all know, you guys heard it multiple times, the scale will, the scale will get you. It will get you. It will have you feeling like you made zero progress. Our eyes be playing tricks on us. For months, I'm like, I look exactly the same. There's no change. And then you go and look at the before photos. You look at the videos before and you're like, who is that? Who is that? When it comes to tracking progress, photos, videos, and clothes. Yesterday, literally yesterday, I was like, dang, babe, I had these jeans and I have not been able to fit them. And I bought them over a year ago. Like, I wonder if I can fit them. They literally slid on slid right on and I couldn't even get them past my thighs when I bought them. Make sure you're finding a healthy way to track your progress. If the scale doesn't bother you, then hey, go for it. It shouldn't be your number one way of tracking yourself because even like right now, I'm feeling like phew, about to start my period, super bloated right now. The belly is like, it's not, look, look. Just remember, especially as women, our bodies change throughout the month, unfortunately. Some days you're gonna feel way better than others. Just remember, you're making changes, regardless if you see it on the scale or not. And the last and final thing that I wanna go over that also helped me was supplements and vitamins. Supplements and vitamins are not 100% necessary, right? They are that supplementation. If you're not getting it in from your food, this is just another way of getting it in. You guys know I am a avid protein powder drinker. I drink protein powder and then I do take quite a few supplements. Um, maybe I'll list them down below, but just to go over a few that I for sure recommend, and this is for anybody, magnesium and omega fish oil. I take B12 and I take vitamin D. So those are the ones that I feel like are just kind of universal for everyone. And then for my PCOS girlies, I also take Inositol, um, I've just recently started Berberine, and Sal Palmento for my hair, I was losing my hair. Those are all of the supplements that I take. Oh, caffeine, caffeine would be also another supplement. I don't do a ton of caffeine, but every once in a while I do, because I'd be sleepy, I'm a sleepy gal. You don't need these things, it's just an addition. That is a wrap on the tips. I am about two thirds of the way. I got a little bit more that I wanna change um, a little bit more body fat that I want to drop down before we jump into maintenance and then eventually get back into trying to put on some more muscle mass because I definitely want to put on more muscle. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything that I missed and I will try to get to them. Thank you again Bear Mattress for sponsoring today's video. I will link all of their information down below and I will see you guys in the next video.